and we're live. Welcome everybody to Comedy Cellar Nightly uh, at the Comedy Cellar Vegas YouTube channel. Uh, tonight we have a really fun panel. I think it's uh, really it's a sausage fest tonight. It's a it's a it's very Ooh. mule heavy in here. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm here, Robert Kelly. We have uh, we have Jeff Die, Andy Haynes, Michael Somerville, fucking what, and of course the ever happy looking. Uh, gnome Dwarman who looks always just a ray of sunshine that floats in here and keeps everybody above water. Um, <laughs> Jesus, no. And uh, what's up, everybody? And we, what's going on, guys? We have Mushy Mike producing the whole thing. From I do think it makes you happier when, when I'm sad. So I, I kind of. I do not. I would love <laughs> to see you happy. I would love to see. But I, I'm, I'm looking at Jeff and he's kind of got a glow and Mike's very happy. He's got little chunky dimples popping out and we got andy with his little you know little silly dog a puppy and 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 you yeah. and you're just a just sitting there sulking i got a lot on my mind robert it's a serious time well maybe you should go think about it <laughs> uh the key word to this is comedy seller so uh, no, I'm kidding. What I mean, I I like to start off the show when I host it when I see you sad with uh, what is on Gnome's mind. Maybe we can make that a segment. What and then see if we can recover from the devastating uh, news that you're about to lay on us about the no, coronavirus. There's, there's, nothing in, there's nothing in particular. I mean, there's even a little good news. They had, they seem like they might have a vaccine coming down in. Um, November or something. And, Jesus. and um, yeah, it's just like, you know, losing a shitload of money, not knowing if we're ever going to open again. Um, Whoa. So you don't think you're going to open the comedy cellar again? No, I didn't say that. I, I think we will, but um, you just don't know what's going on. It's just, it's fucking scary. That's all. I mean, I'm pretty sure we're going to open again, Yeah, but it's just I mean, scary. Why, then, why the why the fuck are we? Why are we doing on, I was on Amazon pricing out um, face shields, you know. Yeah. Uh, like for two dollars a shield, I can like conceivably give everybody who comes in a face shield. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about that last night. Put yeah. the comedy cell logo on it. You can get the comics to sign it after the show and charge five bucks instead of two. You're making three dollar profit. <laughs> yeah, but um, <laughs> it just. I did. I came up with this. How's this? It's a cup with a mask on it. So it's kind of like this. So you sit there like this. So you can drink your drink. <laughs> what, have you? what do you think about that? There was a... Good. Yeah. Now, now, But did I hear that Jeff was already doing gigs? That was yeah, back, yeah. back two $100 ideas from, from Bobby. Thank you very much. I also have the flanker, if you want to hear about that idea, but What's the flank? that's later. The flanker is my way out of this business, and I'm going to go on Shark Tank. It's the it's an anchor that comes with a float. So when you're in a pool or in the ocean, and you float away, you just drop your flanker, and it keeps you in a stationary position. I'm in. Simple. I like the cup idea better. Can we just run with that? That's the good. Yeah. I don't oh, think I really understand the cup idea. What happens when you put the cup down? Well, you just keep it there. Keep drinking. We need you to order more drinks over and over and over. You know, it's a business. No. I think you need an extra long straw or something that comes under the mask. Okay. Speaking of a ray of sunshine, <laughs> Ray Allen, everybody's on his way in as soon as he can get his phone working or he can get whatever girls on top of him off. Uh, <laughs> it was NBA, uh, Hall of Famer, Ray Allen. That is. He's a Hall of Famer. Oh, Can't hear right. you. Can't, oh, God. How many muted, Ray. How many of these are you Check. done? Speech? There you go. Check. There you go. What's up, yeah, buddy? What were we talking about? You. We were, talk we were talking about you. <laughs> what I do? Nothing. Nothing. Was, all, I don't like that you assume it's bad. <laughs> With you, I always assume it's bad. If it's you and Noam, it. I assume it's bad. Why me and Noam? Why are you loving me? with No. Because Jeff and Mike are, are not bad. You and Noam are, are up to no good. I am always up to good. I am a big fan of Ray Allen, and I am a big fan of uh, his uh, comedy, uh, his uh, foundation for comics in New York City. No, thank you. Supportcomedians.org. Thank you, Robert. It's I think been, it's great. 
Thank you, man. How, much, how much money have you distributed so far, Ray? Say it once more. How much money have you distributed? $26,000. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. Now, if I give you 200, can I get 500 back? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if some if somebody gets money from this foundation um do they have to do they still get paid full price in aruba yes they do there's no okay. connection between the two between the two ah, oh there we go <laughs> not bad now, we were talking <laughs> we were talking about uh jeff actually and i want to talk to you ray too but jeff you worked uh at uh wise guys yeah, Wise Guys Comedy Club this weekend. We had four shows, and it was uh, live, and it was awesome. It was live as opposed to you taping well, I it? I just and... want to make it clear for anyone listening. It wasn't a Zoom show. It wasn't one of these virtual <laughs> things. I'm, I'm being a dick. I'm sorry. Where I'm is that? Where is that? <laughs> Salt Lake City. Salt Lake. Uh, great club. Awesome club. Great, great owner. Awesome club. And that and and people were they – did you talk – did you not say to, anything to anybody after the show? No, I did a whole meet and greet and everything. I, I'm I'm a little selfish. I don't have a wife or kids or uh, I don't know any old people. I never talked to my parents. So I was like, let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, you were on a show the best with way a bunch to live. Of people. Yeah, but I haven't talked to them. They're there, you know, they're in their mansions. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't want you killing Henry Winkler. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the the thing is that like I think that I've got a lot of nasty tweets about going and doing live shows, as you can assume. And, uh, and, and there's, there's, I think there's a nice middle ground at this point in where we're at. Uh, you know, I did, I did, I wasn't going and kissing everyone and I wasn't on a beach having an orgy. I basically, you know, we, I flew, there was no one on the planes. There was no one at the airport. Um, I wore a mask the whole time. The people that came in had to wear masks. Uh, they had to wear masks the entire time they were there. No parties larger than four each, all the tables were separated by six feet. Um, that we weren't supposed to do a meet and greet, but I basically just did it. Like keep everyone at a distance, wear your mask. You know, uh, if you want to buy merch, I'm touching it and then giving it to you. We're not doing like a back and forth. There was no like handshakes or like hugs or anything like normal. But I think that there is, if you use discretion, you know, then you can safely I, do things if you're not afraid, if you're afraid, then just don't, don't leave. I hope this, la I mean, what a great, that sounds odd. No groups over four. That means there's no bachelorette parties. Right. There's, no, there's no horse shit people. Everybody's spread out a little bit. Meet and greets are going to fly. Here's your CD. Yep. Give me my money. Beat it. And there you go. Yep. But the money, the money you get from them, it might have Corona on it. What about that? Uh, it was all Venmo PayPal. So the only thing that, that we took no cash, even the servers, nobody took cash. So wow. the only thing they had to worry about is if maybe I had Corona and passed them the CD, but I'm yeah. wearing, you know, gloves and I'm sanitized up and stuff like that. I will say the one big, big, big positive, uh, and uh, that, that's all I really care to look at usually anyways, but the big positive is people were so grateful. That was the hottest room I've ever performed for. And they were spaced out, which sucks. And it was less people, which sucks, but everyone just seemed so like, Thank you for doing a show. And like even jokes that were just like new stuff, I was kind of just throwing out there. Like everyone, they were just generous with their laughter and their money. I got two That's questions awesome. for you. I got two questions for you. One, did you bring your own mic? Yes. Or did you, did you use, you brought your own mic. Okay, great. Because Noam had said that, that we're probably going to have to all purchase our own mics and bring them with us. There was, right? I already had one, but they, they had four separate mics for the comics. So each comic had a different mic stand. And then in between the shows, they sanitized all the mics. I made a joke where I touched all the mics, knowing because I was the last comic that they were going to sanitize them. So I made a joke and touched them all because the Utah Jazz basketball player did the exact same joke before we knew this was serious. And we were in Utah. Most of the people got the joke. One guy was furious. But that guy was, the guy that was furious didn't know that we sanitized them in between and I'm the last comic. So nobody's going to touch those. But. It's so funny because a guy did, one of the reporters got Corona from that. Yeah. From him that, doing that. I mean, that's murder. If the guy dies, you murdered somebody. <laughs> How fucking Is that Rudy Gobert? Yeah. Rudy Gobert. I forgot his name. I didn't want to say Rudy gay, but yeah, Rudy Gobert. <laughs> nice. Well, hey, what did hey, what, what did the wait wait staff do? Like with the wait, if they went, if you're a waiter and you're going table to table to table, how did that work? Like they're touching, you know. Yeah, the sucky part was um, because there's limited audience members, they had a limited staff, 
So the one girl actually made a lot of money because she had pretty much all the tables, oh. but she's also a little stressed and moving around a lot more. Um, she said she made all of her money like on like just really generous tips. Like a few people tipped really high and that's how she made her action because they felt bad. But a lot of people were kind of broke and so they just tipped regular. Um, but the guy who owns the club, I don't know if I should share this, but the guy who owns the club, he has a certain loan where a lot of his employees have said, I'm not coming back. I'm making more money on unemployment than working at the thing. And so he, he had to replace their jobs because he has a certain loan where he has to have a certain number of staff. So basically yeah. what he said is like, listen, if you don't want to come back, that's on you. No big deal. But just so you know, I need employees and you might not have a position if you win. I, I, th I believe that loan, a small business loan, you have to pay it before a certain time. Yeah. out but they're actually no correct me if i'm wrong they're changing that they're actually going to extend it to use that money in different ways and longer am i right i'm not sure i don't i don't think it's settled yet but you have you have to um you have to use all the money by june 30th uh, and you have to ha keep all the employees or an equivalent number in order for the money to be forgivable mm -hmm. so that's why people are struggling to do that i got an sba loan they um they just, this guy made me meet him down in the meatpacking district and I had to take pictures of my feet, but I, it seemed legit. I don't know how much it paid, but it's worth every penny. That's free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's well, not I mean, forgivable though. I don't think that's forgivable. I think you don't have to. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're a, I have a question. If, you, if you're a customer, how is it like if, so if you're a customer and the waiter goes to one table and like pours you a cup of water and then they, and they're touching your glass and then they go to another table and they're touching that, like, isn't it going, isn't the waiter spreading it from table to table? You know what I mean? Like that's the part. Yeah, I suppose. Like, I don't really know. I, I mean, that's the, that's the best question. Cause I don't have an answer to that, yeah. but also like, I mean, I think we're giving the virus a lot of credit. <laughs> yeah, if it's gonna jump from th I don't I don't really know. Maybe you're right. I don't. Well, I just, I, I, I'm happy you were able to do shows. I think it's fucking great. Yeah. Now, Ray, w that leads to me with you. What is going on with Aruba? I mean, are you gonna be able to go back down there and do shows? Uh, I'm gonna go down in July just to get the fuck out of New York, and I cannot wait. But uh, I think the earliest shows will happen will be November, uh, or it'll start in January. But the showroom wow. is really big, so I can space people apart. That's not a problem. I can I can really distance people. Um, if just you need right friends that aren't afraid of shit, I think I'm your guy. You know, I've already broke that line. And like Lope, come on down. <laughs> I'm your guy. <laughs> Robert's been down there like eight times for the gig. I, I I mean, look, if you called me tomorrow and said, "Look, we're doing it in June," I'd be down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I go down. Number one, uh, I would want to go down and help out the show and the 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 tourism of aruba because i love aruba it's i love aruba as much as you and yeah. if they're doing it in a safe way and i could be safe and my family could be safe you know yeah. i i don't understand that's what i was telling you that it's like look if they can work at job lots or walmart and be safe why can't i fucking work that's how yeah. i feel so i mean i get it flatten the curve okay yep be safe yep wear a mask got it Wash your hands. Don't touch people. Got it. Check, check, check. Yeah. Let's let's uh, let's fucking do this. Yeah. I literally said you know? that today. I'll wear your mask. I won't get in anyone's personal space. I'm gonna wash my hands. I'm gonna be respectful of everyone. Not even get close to them. But I'm good. Other than that, I'm done. I'm going about my regular life. I'm gonna do all the things that I can normally do. I'll do all the things that I just mentioned but other than that i'm fucking done but but you're not scared of it like no you're not leaving your house until this is done because of of who you are or your age and stuff like that you're 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 not you're not bringing it well i mean you've said that not me you've said that Fuck. not me he's not, I'm not the one high obese. risk um, 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 you, know, you uh, are high risk <laughs> what, well, just, let's, let's, what, what makes you high the, risk what are the what are the risk categories old what else <laughs> Older. <laughs> um, I, I, I will. I will leave the house. I. I mean, I'm gonna get a mask. I mean, I can't stay home forever. But I'm not gonna go like hanging out in crowds for long periods of time. I'm gonna try to. I think that. The, I think that if you hang out too long, that's when you get sloppy. You can only maintain the mental energy to be careful and not right. such a crazy stuff a certain amount of time. So I can see myself going to work like a half an hour, an hour, hang out. But I'm afraid to say like six, seven hours. 
you know. You're right. No, that's a that's an interesting point you bring up, dude. You get sloppy after a couple hours of being on guard. Mm-hmm. You, you, then you're like, uh, all of a sudden you're pick, you know, and you're touching your face. So you, ah, I just, cause I've done that. I've, I, I've tried to do this at the house and I know it may sound weird, but I've tried to not touch my face for as long as I could. I've tried to not touch anything, you know, that's not mine in the house. And it's impossible after a certain amount of time, you just wind up doing it because you've done it forever, you know? And and now I have a six-year-old too. That how hard is that to travel or go somewhere with him? If I was go to Aruba, it's like don't touch this, don't do that, don't. You know, we went. Where did we go? We went. Um, we went to a store last week, Staples. Uh, was it Staples? I know one of the stores I took Max to, and he immediately touched something, and I'm like, you can't touch things, man. And that was such a shitty thing to say to a six-year-old. Yeah. You can't touch shit. I mean, it's like he's like what. I mean, he understood, of course, but it's like, ah, uh, this is just. Well, what do you a, tell him? Do you, what do you say? Do you, I mean, you can't. I say, I just, I, he knows it's the Corona. When the Corona is gone, we go back to the life we were living before. You can see your friends. We can go to the park, but until then you have to learn how to wash your hands. You have to uh, listen to mommy and daddy in public. You cannot say no. You have to wear your mask. If you want to take it down for any reason, you have to ask. You can't just pull it down. When we say put it back up, you, there's all these rules you have to kind of set up. We went hiking. Just and- tell them the virus is never over. It'll be the- I was going to say. <laughs> How amazing a whole generation of children who are raised like that. <laughs> just clean hands. Yeah. yeah. And it'll touch anything it's like, No, the virus is still going. You've got to listen to that. I, I'm surprised. I, uh- you should come up with comedy seller masks. You know Ray's gonna have a Ruba Ray masks. They're at, you know. they, they, yeah. No, um, you said that you don't even have a mask yet. Is that what you said? You said I'll get a mask. For me? For me? Yeah. No, I have. I have. I have a lot of masks. Oh, okay. I th- okay. earlier you, you said it, and it sounded like it was like future. Like you're like I'll get a mask. No, <laughs> I meant like, I'll, 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 I'll put one on. No, I've had I've had masks since I ordered them in February. I I, I, I so I know. Ray, how are you gonna how are you gonna make your move uh, now with on the waitresses on the customers like what's what's gonna <laughs> you, you need a new mo? First of all, I do not pursue wait staff. That's no no, I'm that's a bad move. The, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been a, it's been a challenging man. This has been a it's been a a, a celibate uh, a celibate virus, you know. I noticed there's no more hearts on the wall since like the last three weeks ago. Usually, usually, <laughs> usually the tally keeps growing. We need, w- listen, we need to know, listen, Ray, Ray, I know the hearts are victims. So we need to know. Uh, listen, listen, where are the, the hearts, bodies, Ray? There's no, listen, Ray, I know you. Look, I, I love you, Ray. You know that. My son loves you. My wife loves you. I, I, but I know the hearts mean something. <laughs> you, the there's heart. no way. Do you know how hard it is to go and get that many different colors spray paints for just <laughs> one heart? That's just ridiculous. It doesn't make sense financially, artistically. Uh, I mean, I, I, fortunately, I can afford the paint, but uh, I just, yeah. uh, I just kind of, I, you know, I just kind of snap one day. I'm like, I can't. And take being in this fucking space, and I just just painted the hearts one day, which was really stupid because if you're sleeping in a room where there's uh, spray paint drying, you, the fumes for the next five days is fucking awful. What goes bad. through the mind of a 25 year old woman that you bring back to your apartment? She's already borderline about you, and then she walks in, <laughs> it, and then she sees that wall. She's gonna, she's gonna the, turn the, right around and leave. You know what? The few women that have seen these hearts have have really embraced them. Really? Because oh, how young? How you? How young are they? Do they have TikToks or Facebooks? <laughs> <laughs> TikTok. They're not TikTok. Young, they're just stupid. <laughs> I uh, I mean, why why are there more hearts than there were last time though? What okay. happened? It's a different angle. Oh, just different. Is that angle. a Twilight backpack behind you? <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the fumes might be the chloroform that you spilled on your pillow. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh god damn ray did you change you robert you look terrific and is that, yeah. is that did you put in special lighting behind you since i last was here oh, are you talking to me you yeah you look great and the background looks great 
Well, I, I did, you know me, I'm a fucking nerd and I, I did literally just went on YouTube for the last three weeks and researched everything there was to research about live feed sound video. Then he live, called Regu and forgot how to ask him how to do it. Well, <laughs> Re, no, Regu, Regu actually, and I did actually, I did. I, well, Regu helped me a little bit with the connection to my camera. Cause I have a good camera. So here's the funny thing. It's a little capture card that this big, it cost $120. They sat on the shelves forever. And this happened with a ton of shit. But as soon as this happened, all these people were like, how do I hook up my, my mirrorless camera, my DHL camera, whatever the, my, my, uh, my, my Canon to my Mac to get better shit. Cause all the webcams were gone. You can't get them. And then, they bought these little cam link Gal Elgados and they're for 500, 600 bucks now or from 400 to $600. Now a $120 item you can't get. Um, so it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. That's what, what happened with uh, PS fours, all the PlayStation gone. Sold and out. dogs actually the whole, all the shelters are out of dogs because people and, want to raise dogs. Wow. Yeah, we got pools. One. pools, pools are gone. You cannot get, they have these Intex blow up pools or these really simple pools. They're only like 48 inches gone. Can't get them 300 bucks. You wow. can't get them everybody because you can't, there's no summer camp. There's no camp for kids. So everybody's, it's going to be like the seventies where you went in your backyard and jumped in a pool all day. Yeah. If your parents uh, are poor, you're screwed. <laughs> Everywhere is going to be Staten Island this summer. No one. You <laughs> yes, it really, buddy. You're absolutely right. Everybody's Staten Island this summer. It doesn't matter. The, the above ground pool. Above ground pool pools right now are fucking flying off the house. If you can get one, I went to. I got one. I got an above ground pool because my kid loves swimming. Ray, you know that we yeah. we used to go to twice a year. And he is in the pool from uh, nine o'clock in the morning until five o'clock in the afternoon. So we had to get a, a, a pool and Gnome, Gnome shut down the compound. You know, Gnome, Gnome has probably one of the prettiest pools, saltwater, gorgeous pool, right? It is like five minutes down the road. And, uh, you know, he's always been, you know, generous, just come by, jump in and, even when they're not there, they let us come over. But that's done, you know, now because no, I think we're all just going to show up and jump in. <laughs> Fuck yeah. First of all, we never thought he'd really do it. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Came home and found the fucking Kelly family in our pool. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> who, who really does that? Anyway, that actually, yeah, that all, you know, we're. All, I know up. Robert and Noma are in New York. Where, Andy? Where are you? You're in L.A. <laughs> I'm in New York. I came back. Ah, okay. I spent the first. I spent March and April in LA. I got bored. Now, are you and Rosebud still together? Did you make the trip back? Because last time I talked to you guys, you were uh, a little on edge. Yeah, no, we're good. Uh, she's not allowed to talk while I'm doing my performances, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you no, have she's to right here? You want you want her to say hi? Yes, of course. Of course, we love Rosie. Her. Come in here. New York. He doesn't have other rooms for other people. Yeah. To be. Of course, she's in the room. <laughs> how how mad is he that she's going to be on now? <laughs> Hi guys. Hey, what's Dude, happening, yeah, Rosebud? Right. What's going on? Not much. How's everybody doing? Hanging in. Good. Are you headlining for Andy right now? What's happening here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, I am. I love that he said I'm not allowed to talk while he's doing his performance. <laughs> he was. It was a joke. He's not on the lead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Getting a secret apartment. Yeah. Uh, well, let us know. Me and Noam will chip in. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, S Somerville hasn't said a, a single thing yes yet. Yeah, it's like the it's like the table at the fucking cellar. It's the same. Thing. <laughs> Listen, here's a, no, Mike. What's up, buddy? Uh, Where are you, you guys, man? I'm in New York as well. And okay. I haven't flown anywhere. I'm kind of with Noam. I'm a big chicken. I'm afraid of going outside. So I'm I'm curious to hear, like Jeff, how was flying? Was it like being in an airport on a plane? You're just not afraid of anything. I would. Uh, I want to start that by saying that we've called Gnome old. We've called him very old, and now a chicken. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just put. Well, let's Jewish. Put it up, called him Jewish too. Let's, like let's put it all together. An old Jew chicken. 
<laughs> the the, ch the chicken was for myself. I put that on me. You guys, have your fun. Go ahead. No, the airport. <laughs> the airport was. Uh, it wasn't scary, like because of the virus, as much as it was just eerie because no one was there. Uh, so we flew from LA to no, New York. It was empty. That was the best yeah. flying experience I've ever had in my life. Yeah. Now, also, like a whole area was just shut down. So, like, I had got off a plane in a on an area of the airport. Let's say it's the A terminal or whatever. All A was shut down and dark. So I had to walk <laughs> from A to like a different spot. You're on a boat. <laughs> backwards, no? no, be careful. Not backwards. I'm gonna be the first comic to throw up on a Zoom. Uh, he's never heard of calling focus, has he? <laughs> no, you're, we not, were, you're, uh, not, you're not gonna be the first audience member that's done it though. Right. Go ahead, we were go the, ahead, don't uh, mind me. <laughs> we were on our, our flight and we were like, you know, <clears throat> middle of the plane and plane has like, you know, 10 people on the whole flight and we go, oh, can we move up? And they go, no, that's actually reserved for the comfort seat. And uh, we said, no, they said it was the even more space seat. Yeah. There that's the point. On the fucking plane. Yeah. Yeah, pay, actually yeah. extra. Yeah. I'm hey, sorry. Listen. I, I, I got to pause. I did not mean to pull focus. That that is a shitty thing to do. And you're absolutely right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Finally, something I'm into is behind. You. I love this part. <laughs> Finally. Okay. 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 Enough. Enough. You, enough. Yeah. You guys have the same mustache right My now. Green uh, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. What's, sorry. Uh, so, but you, but did you want? Did you expect to get like booted up to first class or something? It wasn't even first class. It was like two rows no, in front of us. Like two, we wanted like two seats. But they wanted to be apart from each other. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like the economy plus or whatever. People, yeah. I mean, Andy. I wanted <laughs> two seats away from Andy. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> how did you, Robert, how did you switch you and Noam's position on the webcam? I, don't, I think it does it. I don't. I don't know. You ask very interesting questions, Ray. Um, <laughs> I, I, I. I. I don't know. Well, this is all. There's a lot of good stuff going on. Through your MacBook, real quick. <laughs> Can you do a, a screen share and show us your setting? <laughs> hey, Andy's got this awesome hair going on. No one's being yes. annoying. You look terrific, Robert. Somerville's probably shit faced. Don't Jeff me. dies sitting. It looks like in the in the offices of ASCAP. <laughs> and I you know, have a fucking whatever graffiti on the walls. That was good. Cry, saying, look, that was called those. Those are called cries for help, Ray. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh, Robert, are you still on whole thirty? No, uh, buddy. Let me tell you something, my friend. Uh, whole thirty since I left Aruba. Good for you. Still you down. Right? I'm still down. Um, uh, under three hundred. I haven't, here's the thing though. I haven't lost. I was on the verge. I felt like I was going to start losing a lot of weight, but I was like, I was in the middle of writing this hour on losing weight and you know, weight addiction. And I felt like we were going to film it like now, like we were going to film it. We had a date at the village underground to film the first half of the special as me being heavy, you know, and the next half was going to be me after I lost all the weight. So it was going to be visually kind of, you know, cool on that. So I was like, I I'm going to try to maintain this and not go down to like what I want to go down to, because then it's going to be weird. I mean, I just some, if I lost all the weight and then I'm up to doing jokes, like I have a lot of yeah. good fat jokes that I, I can't, I'm not going to be able to do. Well, lose all the weight, film yeah. it, and then just gain it all back and then film the other half. What am I fucking De Niro? I don't want to get it. I'm gonna lose a foot. I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna get diabetes. I can't feel my fucking middle toe. Yeah. This. <laughs> but I don't know. But I, I am still on it. I'm still on it. I've been kicking ass on it. And uh, I tell you that air fryer fucking right. saved my life. air fryer. No, am I using your air fryer that we got you? I don't think so. Uh, <laughs> I love awesome. the air fryer. Thanks. We're we're using your fondue thing you gave us. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Fucking fondue. How, fond how does fondue compare to an air fryer? I mean, what the hell's going on, guys? I mean, what the no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you Listen, get, you're, comparing, you're comparing what your wife picked out to what my wife picked out. I picked it out. <laughs> I picked that out for you. I rest my kid. Um uh -huh. 
So I'm so just curious, in, in that club in Utah, they had big crowds? Yeah, we. I mean, they could only sell 125 per show. But they so did? I think before I got there, they had already had them all. Because 125, pretty modest for how big Salt, Salt Lake does, only has like one sports team, and they're not even playing. So it's pretty easy in Utah. So that, that's so only that's like been, three Mormon families. Yeah, was, uh, and to sit apart, though. <laughs> so, so it sounds like if, if, if the um, – if the case rate in New York falls to some level similar to Utah, then people will come out. Oh, no, I, th I do oh, so to, I already have kind of like my own theory on what you just said. I don't, I think the problem is that you're a business and you have to think about the safety of everyone. Trust me, people will come. Like that's, that's not the problem. The thing is that the people that are scared are staying at home and the people that aren't scared are staying at home because nothing's open. But if you let that kind of open up, people are going to come out who are like, I, I, I'm one of the dum-dums that would go out and just fucking live my life if anything was open to be doing. What do you the think about, I, I heard this suggested, it's, but what do you think about if we have to spread out the customers actually putting mannequins in the seats in between just to I, give the vibe? I read that article and it's very, the person that did it's very funny. It who wrote like, the article? What's the article? A restaurant in, uh, in DC I think, or somewhere. I think it's Virginia. It? South Virginia. Virginia. But it seems like it, you know, psychologically, it's not a dumb idea. It's great. That's it's funny. Sad. I think that's sad. Well, I think yeah. creepy as a performer. Well, who invited her? It's fucking <laughs> weird. It's like that's just funny. Why it's is it like, sad? It's Why like is it sad? Making out, it's like making out with a pillow. You know what I mean? You What's wrong with that? Ah, yeah. oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what if it's a really nice pillow? Yeah. Also, what about fuck? What What's about? Weird? You don't yeah, get what about what's weird? What's what about fucking the pillow? Is that bad? No, 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 no. no. That's That's normal. Normal. That's what if you fuck in the pillow and your wife is on the other side of the pillow? Is that bad? Not weird either. Okay. That's self care. Sounds like <laughs> Orthodox Jewish pillows. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, I like that. Mike, anything? I, you, okay. I've, I've never had sex with a pillow, and so I, I went to Catholic <laughs> school. I can't speak to this. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you're Jeff. You're in Los Angeles. You're in L.A. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, okay. It's only uh, I don't know, six o'clock here, so it's still sunny and regular. Uh, that's cool. So, so gnome, I, I, a quick question: Would you, if they said, okay, you can open up uh, half, right? Would you open up all three places? Well, like I, I think village? I maybe I, you were there. I what I think I would do is um, actually start doing shows in the olive tree and in the main bar on the fat black pussycat. I would try. I would expand it the room so that even though each room would be half capacity that we could get closer to full capacity providing so this business. Last time, last time I did this, you said you were going to wait a year. Is that still, you think you're still going to wait a year? No, I don't think I actually said I was going to wait. I was afraid they might close us for a year. I was afraid this could take a year. I'm, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to open when they tell us it's safe to open. Yeah. We'll see what happens, you know. Also, New Yorkers. Oh, I might wait a year to go in myself. I might have said. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I said yeah. I was going to send Esty. Yeah, yeah. No, that's still that's still the plan. <laughs> but no, why why not just do the Village Underground? It's the biggest room. Why not just yeah. do you know whatever fifty percent of that of that room or six whatever percentage? The money, right? I I want to make as much money as I can. Right. So the underground. I mean, that is not the most money. No, no. If you're right, if if there's only a uh, hundred people to then yeah, we'll only open one room and it would be the underground. Oh, I got you. But I don't know <clears throat> how much business there'll be. There might be significant business. I also, know New, Yorkers, New Yorkers might be way different than a place <laughs> like Utah or a place, because here's the thing, you guys live in tight quarters. like, And so people are a little bit, I think that the coronavirus is much more serious where you guys are than, than most places. Well, yeah, listen, so maybe people won't be asking. Yeah. Just, yeah. just, just, just everybody yeah. understands my thinking. I'm sorry, Rosemary. Uh, uh, is that we're, we're, we're stage three or four of this opening. So I'm presuming by the time they do let us open, it will be the last step. So people will already be kind of used to going out. They'll be back to work. It won't be the way it would be if we were first. So I think by the, if they finally let us open, this should be more than just 100 people uh worth of business well, doesn't also depend how many tourists are willing to come to new york as well i mean you get a good amount of tourists yeah. i've we got a good amount of tourists but we, we have yeah. enough business without tourists yeah but schools yeah, but are we, gonna be, schools are gonna be gone i mean nyu is not coming back right 
Uh, I don't think they've decided yet. It's the the California school system. I would think with a city of nine million, you could get a hundred people a night who want to see a show. Yeah, we we went out the other day. It was like a beautiful day, and the parks were completely full, like yeah. completely full. People were wasted. They oh, would they love did. to go they inside. Were, people will go to a comedy show if they're at the parks. They're gonna. Go. I I yeah, cut nobody Rosebud was off before. Mad. I'm worried about I'm worried about that. What do yeah. you want to say? Don't worry about it. I don't remember what I was talking about. So don't worry about it. You're talking about the mannequins. Um, no. Oh yeah. Oh. No. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, wow. bad. God, what? you can barely tell the difference. Yeah, which ones are the mannequins? It's hilarious. <laughs> Surprisingly good tippers. Yeah. <laughs> Look how happy he is. That guy's actually a wanted uh, Nazi war criminal. <laughs> He's he he Why actually fuck he he fucked her the night before. <laughs> Those That's are all blow great. up dolls. This is just terrible. This is just, those are sex it. dolls. That's horrible. That's horrible. Mom? <laughs> That's ah. Where did he get all the dresses? Well, there's a there's a different story too of a guy who got real mannequins from like a, a local like theater that wasn't using them and he put it in the thing. I think that guy might have been first. I don't know. These look like just weird sex blow up things, but the other one that I read was like it it looked like a full restaurant with like eerie wooden mannequins. It was still like a horror film, but it was funny. I wonder what's going to happen when this all goes away. When we get the the the, uh, the uh, fucking antidote, whatever the fuck they call it, the uh, vaccine. 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 What what's going to happen? All this shit that they've invented, like you know, drive-in theaters are going to be huge this summer. Drive-in theaters are going to be fucking epic. Um, we bought a car just for that. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's people um, like there's what 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 club is actually making it? Uh, oh, the Kowloon's in in Boston. It's huge. I mean, a massive Chinese restaurant, and it has a comedy club upstairs. He, they just opened today, I believe, and it's all drive-in. It's like old school. You drive in, they come to your car, they take your order. And then they have a drive-in theater. It's it's crazy. So it's old. They're going back to the fifties. Like happy days. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. I mean, but what's going to happen when this all goes away? Are people just going to say like, "Fuck that," and yeah. you know, go back inside? Yeah. And that that yeah. whole business model is going to be dead. We want yeah. life to go back to normal. We don't need we don't need to go to drive-ins and do Steve Hofstetter shows. We want to just go back to regular. <laughs> Jeff, I didn't realize it was that bad. It's that well, I'm that desperate. <laughs> I the second, the second week of this, my manager calls me up and goes, "You know, do you know Steve Hofstetter?" And I was like, you, "I was going to stop you right there." <laughs> <laughs> I think I think uh, Andy has the mic portion of the headset. Yeah, I couldn't hear anything. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just switch seats. Get her over on that ear. Here, let's. We're gonna just turn the. Uh, We'll turn the sound off the headphones. All right, there you go. There you go. Hey, Ken. So, what? Ray, I'd like to hear some more about your, your, your distribution of money to the comics. Is there anything interesting about that? No, not nothing interesting. It's just, you know, it's. I feel sad that people are so stuck, but glad that they're reaching out. You know, I mean, so that's, that's you know, it's a good thing. Artie how Fuqua much, made a really how, nice donation, which is terrific. How much money you, do you have on distributed? That? Uh, right now it's about 12,000. And actually I found an email the other day. I was looking, I looked in the spam emails. There was one from April 19th and I immediately, you know, I called them. I was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't see this email and, you know, give me your PayPal. And Were you in time? <laughs> <laughs> did, did you say Voss? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ray, I we got engaged if you have any surplus you know we got oh, a nice congratulations. congratulations thank you yeah that's awesome you'll, you'll be getting a lovely support comedians.org mug oh perfect oh thank god <laughs> how did you do it was it Two of them. Under where will they put it <laughs> <laughs> uh i i put the ring in a in a takeout box and we had to go food in la okay shocker so at home <laughs> yeah <laughs> It was her birthday, and I had forgot to buy her a gift. So <laughs> I gave her the rest of my life. How yeah. long have you guys been together total right now? Seven months. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You really, 
You really aren't on the lease, are you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, married after seven months? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Don't make that face. What's wrong with you? No, but we're alcoholics, and, you know, we're older. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's a joke with alcoholics. They said, uh, how can you tell an alcoholic's on their second date? They say, I love you. So, you know. <laughs> Hang, on. <laughs> Hang on once. It's, it, I mean, look. It is pretty fast, but who gives a fuck, right? You might be dead. Are you getting a prenup? Are you going to sign a prenup? Yeah. yeah. Rose, Rosebud? <laughs> no, no, I have to sign the prenup. Rosebud yeah. comes from oil money. I'm, yeah. you know. Oh, oh no, that's okay. Good. Then it's no, that's okay. Weird. Then it doesn't matter. Andy, Andy, we knew that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But even in the business. Is that true? <laughs> are, you really, are you like from Midland, Texas or something? Yeah. yeah. Andy, I'm I didn't even know who you were. Until I met until Rosebud. <laughs> yeah, Rosebud's on fire. She's the a she's the, the the granddaughter of the former Secretary of State. Who? Yeah. James Baker? Yep. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. You fucking yeah. lucky Robert, son who, of a bitch. Robert, who, who are you to this <laughs> I, I married a Polak from Everett, Massachusetts. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> she reminds me I have to change my light bulbs. Yeah, but you guys are back <laughs> Whoever, whoever's tapping on their keys, stop it. It's annoying. Andy, and he's no, playing with it. his fucking nail clipper. Elm, is that your real? Imagine how, imagine how annoying that's going to be in three years from now. Rose. Say, is this your first fight? <laughs> when, I, it's been like just having gotten engaged and then being in the same room for two months. I'm like. If you can pass that test, I mean, marriage is going to be easier than quarantine. I, I don't think yeah. they're passing it. <laughs> <laughs> the hey, way Michael. Andy scrapes his fork against a bowl, like I don't even like the sound of him nourishing himself. Look at, yeah, look at, look at. Um, I'm watching Rosebud sleep, and uh, I can't get the fill the pillow over her face quick enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm quick. Uh, uh, you can play I'm this quick. at your wedding. <laughs> My, Michael, who who is that person that just went behind you a little yeah. bit? That is, um, let me let me see. My uh, well, that's my well, girlfriend. I Oh, okay. I'm just letting you know there's somebody behind you. <laughs> it's coming from inside the house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, that is. Uh, uh, she's the one with a real job, which is why I live here. Nice. Well, it's a beautiful apartment. You could tell somebody else. Besides really you. nice. Yeah. 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 Uh, guys, and Jeff, your place looks great. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's I'm I'm very proud of it. I, I I that's one thing I didn't like about New York is I was living in like such a small space and it drew me crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And Noam, is that a real background? No. Yes, that's Eric Clapton's house. This is a, a green screen. Oh, okay. And you have a roller coaster in your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. He has to sell it now, though. <laughs> Robert, has has your family been on it? <laughs> Pretty convincing no. green screen. <laughs> no, my uh. Huh? Love. God, she's. I tell you what, I, she is adorable. She is adorable. I think I met her at the cellar one night. Um, I think I think I saw I think I saw Artie and Godfrey trying to hook up with her around ten years ago. Uh, <laughs> I told you, so Artie Artie made a really nice donation to the thing. Did I say that? Yeah. Yeah. How much? Two thousand. That is wow. nice. Nice. That is nice. Between I mean, Artie and Louis C.K., that about covers it, huh? Yeah, it's a quite a bit. And, yeah. and Noam. Noam gave a lot of money, too, right? He did. Not the race thing. I didn't trust him. Oh, he gave so much money that, to my Have yeah. you seen Louis special? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, great. It's great, yeah. It was great. I, mean, really? I got some shit for posting that because I live in Los Angeles, but it was fantastic. Now, who gave you? Please don't tell me it was other comics. Um, no, it was just a bunch of uh, dumb, stupid feminist chicks that follow me for God knows what reason. But other comics do. There are definitely did comics. You, did you see Rosebud's eyebrows go up when he said that? I just went. Why? What's wrong with feminist, feminist chicks? Annoy me. I was what's like, okay, with, all right. What, what's wrong with dumb well, feminists? They are annoying. What's wrong with dumb, stupid feminist chicks? Well, but you're not in L.A. You're not in L.A., so. <laughs> hey, I'm a dumb, stupid, stupid. feminist. <laughs> The dumb, stupid feminists are the ones that tweeted that. Dumb, dumb feminist cunts, you know. Yeah. No, no. How, how did you get Harrison Greenbaum's uh, bedroom background? 
<laughs> That's Moran's entryway. <laughs> how, how funny was he had Harrison on last night and we were fucking joking with him about he had just this pink back. It was all pink lit up. And he's like, my girlfriend's right in the room right over there. And we're like, stop it. And then we're like, you got dildos. And he whips out a fucking huge purple dildo he had just in a backpack next to him. Oh, my oh, girlfriend a- Craig. Yes, waiting for the <laughs> <Huffman. laughs> Oh my god, uh, 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 Robert. Shit. How about you, man? What do your days consist of? I because all I'm doing is eating, and you're you're being disciplined. So what do you do all day? I wake up as soon as I I stopped trying to lie in bed and go back to sleep. That was killing me. My mm-hmm. brain would just fucking I would just tumble out of control, and I would just be. <laughs> I would just, it would just be a, so I get, as soon as I wake up and I start thinking, I come up, put the coffee on, bring the dog out. I sit in the backyard. I make a couple calls. I blah, blah, blah. I do some work. What time are we talking right now? What time? Seven, seven oh. o'clock in the okay. morning. Oh. Yeah. Uh, sometimes right. six, sometimes six. Yeah. Because what I was doing, I was going to bed and then I would wake up at six and just stare at the ceiling and thinking about how my life just went. I mean, honest to God, from the grit, I was so happy to, I don't know what the future is. I don't understand. I money and, you know, I have a house. I got a kid. I got a wife. I, you know, I, yes, I did well, but I did well working a lot. I worked from September until June. And then I took it off in the summer a little bit to be with the kid, but I, I, I just wake up and I go and then I got to do um, I did all this shit in here. I, I mean, you ever regret about- asking a question? <laughs> <laughs> we just heard everything Bobby's doing in this quarantine. Yeah, I know. I I, that, I, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm more Robert, busy now. I'm more I'm busy now than I have been Bobby, Last before. week. I was like, I completely fucking lost it. Like I, yeah. I just like, I felt like I was doing pretty good. And then last week, you got I don't engaged. Know what I was just like, <laughs> you got it's engaged. all over. Like I just fucking spiral. Well, because people don't understand that this business in your head, not I don't know if it's reality. I don't think it is. But in your head, it's momentum, and yeah. you're constantly building momentum. Yeah. You're constantly trying to push to the next thing to get something else to get something else to get. And you're you know you don't want to go backwards. You you don't mind staying here, but you want to even if you go up just a little bit. You know what I mean? So. You're, you're pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And then all of a sudden it's just taking away all this work for how 10 years, 20 years, it's all wiped. And do you think it's gone, gone though? Or do you think? I think it's gone. I do think it's gone as far as it was. Absolutely. I don't think for, for the next year, we're going to go back to, at least for me. I mean, look, mm. dude, I don't know. We're all in different spots. Right, right. I mean, I'm my wife is a stay-at-home mom. I'm the breadwinner. I would have to work every weekend and I built a certain thing at certain places and certain clubs to, you know, I can make a certain amount of money, a certain living. And that is gone. That's just gone. And I have to I do my Patreon every night, six nights a week. And then I gotta do this show maybe a couple times a week or you know, sometimes more. And then I do all the other shows I have to do. I mean, it's a whole different world for us right now, you know. Um, but by so the same know. token, you know, it's nice that you know, you know, there's no commute, and you know, it's. it's I just- I love the commute. I love the commute. I love, I loved having dinner at the house and then jumping in my car and driving to the cellar, finding a spot, getting frustrated, going in, <laughs> seeing the back table. Whom I'm on last, of course, I'm on last every fucking show, and bitching him, and then going up and killing, having a good time, and then coming you call home. Call me Artie Lang. Yeah. Call you Artie Lang because you look <laughs> like him. And and then uh, and then go home at like one thirty. Everybody's asleep. Watch a little Netflix. Have a little snacky poo. Healthy. And, uh, you know, now Has it's anybody heard from Artie. I haven't. No, I hope he's all right. I think uh, I hope so, too. Yeah. But I, I'm more busy now than I've been ever. I believe I don't know yeah. why. I mean, see Joe I, Rogan's- it feels like that. It feels a little bit like even though there's less. I'm, I'm going less places. It feels like I have more to do. Yeah, all day long. I think it's yeah. because when you when you think about that, like momentum, you're constantly yeah. trying to. If if you're not getting it from outside of yourself, you gotta you, you're constantly creating yeah. it for yourself anyway. But 
especially now when there's nothing else to do but like yeah. just make shit. Try, yeah, yeah try yeah. to create shit. Exactly We're what literally can I be doing. I mean, you you're doing Ray. You're doing a lot. I don't know. You asked me to do it. I don't even know what it is. Can you? I don't know what is it. You're doing a show every week. Yeah, every Friday, and all Friday. all you guys, everyone out here, except Noam, because not a uh, because it's you, but uh, everyone else, you're you're all invited to do it. It's every Friday night at eight o'clock, and it's uh we have we sell tickets, and it's basically it's 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 an online show. It's about an hour and ten minutes. What well, well, what do you do? Uh, it's me and a few other comics, and it's basically it's sort of a, a hybrid like conversation slash stand up, but it's not people just doing sets because that just drags on too much. But I had Gilbert Gottfried was on, Richard Kind was on, uh, nice. a bunch of people you guys know, and it's great. And, we, and the money that we raised, everybody, every I, everybody does get paid something like set money, and then the money raised goes to this charity in Aruba because. Their economy got hit worse than any economy in the world. Wait, and what happened over there? There's, there it's all tourism. So yeah. they, they're, they're, at, they're making, I mean, it's decimated. They're, economically, it's decimated. He was, he was joking. Oh. Oh. He was being sarcastic. Oh. Oh. Do you ever regret asking the question? <laughs> yeah, he's... Ray, Ray, do you speak yeah, in you a... a... Go ahead, go ahead. Papi, papi, manto, un tiki, so. yeah, do you speak papi, manto? Si. Yeah, how do you think he's getting laid? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's walking. He's walking up, going, "You sakiyaki? <laughs> <Eve?" laughs> no, you are yeah. irascible." I'm sorry, that was a bad one. I, I, I apologize. It's uh, <laughs> anyway. So it, the money goes to a really good cause and whatever. So yeah, <laughs> uh, I think Paul Schaefer is going to be doing it. I think Paul Schaefer is doing it this Friday. Who's that? From, the, from Letterman. This, I'm the, kidding again. <laughs> <laughs> We got to loosen you up, Ray. You're too serious. You're in the heart. I, I have to say, sometimes I feel incredibly relaxed during this quarantine. Other times I just feel like just a, a fucking train wreck. It really is. Yeah. No, I think all of us. I, I did, uh, of us. When I did that virtual show, I was like super afraid that I'd feel like rusty because this is the longest I haven't done jokes. And to be fair, it was bad. I, I was, it was, I was just off. But then the second I got on stage in Utah, being on the stage in front of a, awesome. I didn't feel rusty at all. I felt right. So I was like, oh, it's these virtual shows. That's what's yeah. throwing me off. It's so it's, different. There's so different. something about being in front that people don't get it. It is so, you, it was the second you step on stage and look out and see those people, that vibe that they're giving you and you grab that mic, it's different every time. It's it's a different energy. It's a different crowd, and that thing lights something, and it starts an engine inside of us that you can't you can't replace. You know what? What did you? What? Um, um, <laughs> I thought I was having a stroke. It's him playing the guitar. He fucking, we got a sound bed now. Let's play it in the background, Noam. That's great. So, uh, Jeff, tell us about your <laughs> tell us about your experience now. <laughs> the wrong mood. He's got to play something better. You know. <laughs> That's all he's got. So Andy and uh, <laughs> how do you feel? No more so jerking off. We met on the house. cold October night. <laughs> and a question. For, oh, did you guys see this? This is fucking great. This is so great. Joe Rogan signed a deal today for Spotify for worth over a hundred million dollars. Wow. All his content. YouTube, everything will only be on Spotify, and he will be, I would think, the next, he is the next Howard Stern. I mean, he is that big. His show's that big. And, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, congratulations, first of all. He's earned I it. mean, going from, I mean, look, I was in Boston, and guys told me he wasn't going to make it because he was dirty. Wow. That's right. Wow. So, so, I mean, there was guys who were like, dude, you're never going to make it, and you're too dirty and you blah, blah, blah. And you got to fucking, and he was like, go fuck yourself. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, now a hundred million dollars. I think it's the great. Day, the day that deal happens. Here we are, Robert, well lit, wearing some makeup. Look at you looking <laughs> auditioning. Crazy. I just, I'd like to talk about area 51 for a little bit. If you got <laughs> and hallucinogenics. Like, I know that the guys we fucked, uh, girls, they, they signed a deal with Luminary where they, it was like a million dollar or something wow. deal. So I can't. Yeah, they're not even talented. So like, it's pretty impressive that Joe could make this much money. Yeah. 
<laughs> I've always said it's all a bringer show from the very first show you ever do to the very last. It's all a bringer. So he must have the numbers. So, Jeff, you've never been asked to do the show. Is that what you're saying? Oh, there's plenty of shows I've never been asked to do. But yeah, that's definitely one of them. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Uh, did I ask you to do mine? Yeah, I did. Um, what, what do you what do you attribute the popularity of that show to? Which one? Rogan. He can get it's... anybody. He can get any guest he wants with it's one guest? message. No, so but I don't think it's that. I that's think it's it. I think it's because he speaks to like the you know that middle part of America where it's like they're not liberal, they're not conservative, they're somewhere in the middle. They're dudes that like feel like they're like dudes that like love their country and psychedelics. You know, it's weird. But, it's a weird. But he's but he. I think he, I think it's more than. Right? I think it's more than that. I think he speaks to the left and to the right. I don't think yeah. it's just the middle. I think that he, yeah. he's a he's a Democrat, but he also has a lot of uh, uh, conservative uh, viewpoints. You know what I mean? But he believes in uh, gay marriage. He believes in probably a woman's right to choose. He, he believes you should have a fucking gun and kill an elk and eat its fucking liver. Um, so but he's also, you know, look at man. Uh, Rogan is Rogan. And he's been, there's something about him from day one. Back when he did a half hour uh, MTV comedy half hour, he stood out amongst everybody when he, you know, when he, when he did his, you know, he got a sitcom for eight years or set, whatever that fucking news radio yeah. stood out when he did the uh, fear, fear factor. factor. It was just, he's, He's been that guy. We get one of them. You know, I'm not I'm not comparing him to like Elvis or something, but it's that thing where you can't yeah, if you do what he does, get a podcast and a good microphone and some lights. Uh it's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna pan out. You know what I mean? Because yeah. he's he's that he's that guy. And he interviews people, his brain, he's a very smart guy, but he also is cool with not knowing shit. You know, a lot of guys who are smart. I'm smarter. Than, they do that. I'm smarter than you. Shit. He he's smart. He's really intelligent. But he also is is how she, maybe dumb enough to know. I'm, I don't know that. So he's everybody can kind of listen to him and not feel uh, fucked up. So you know, I think he's. I think it's. I listen to it all the time. He so has me, guests on. Me and you, me and you, I, you I together it. make one Rogan, huh? Well, we need. <laughs> <laughs> I you know think what? also like wouldn't you say that like most things that are as popular as a Joe Rogan podcast you could just blame on the middle of America you could say that about Howard Stern you could say that about McDonald's you could say about almost anything that's that wildly popular well I, I think like Stern was popular I mean even you know Stern got a big backlash this last week I mean a lot of his fans yeah. fucking turned against them why what, ha he, what happened he said that he if you voted for Trump he fucking hates you yeah and a lot of his fans who just did. laughed. Right. A lot of people words. did. No, he says that Trump, he said he meant that if you voted for Trump, Trump hates you. You shouldn't have voted for him. You think oh, he, yeah. him, he really hates you. Yeah. yeah Howard, but he, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I guess that's, I, I, yeah, I guess that's how it went. But it's, it's still like, fuck you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why do you like this guy? Go fuck. And a lot of people who listen to him, look, man, you know, you should have listened to Michael Jordan. Republicans buy sneakers too, baby. Exactly right. Yeah, but they, you know, the reason why you love Stern back in the day is because he had a chick, you know, masturbate on a speaker. He had a Sibian machine in his fucking studio. <laughs> he, he, you know, you, he pours wine in a guy's asshole and he tastes what wine it is. That's a lot of those people, you know, let's face it, they're not aristocrats, you know? Uh, and, and a lot of people hated him too because he kind of evolved into a mature guy where he does these interviews with, uh, you know, people who, and I, I like it. I, I think he's great. Well, I listen to him all the time. Look, I think he's a genius. To do that many hours of radio a day is incredible. And he was always very anti-establishment and doing things that no one else ever done before. And with Joe, I think he, he and Howard are very different, except for the fact that I think when Joe is totally authentic, he's himself. And when yeah. he does have somebody on and he doesn't understand what it is, he's speaking on behalf and he asks questions on behalf of the millions of people that are listening to him, you know? Yeah. yeah. I think Stern made a big mistake going to Sirius, and I think it's pretty clear now that it was a mistake. Well, financially, it worked for him, and I think he really was sick of the FCC at the time that he did it. You know, I think that's why. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, so much, you know how much money he got in him, and he went there, and he's got a whole wing. All his staff was taken care of. He took his fans that were loyal. He's still got millions of people. He actually evolved into this thing where high-end 
A-list celebrities, A-list musicians will go on his show before anybody else's. That's what I was trying to say earlier, is that he can get anybody. Yeah, yeah, but and I, but, yeah. but he, and what was the alternative? He could have evolved into that anyway. The thing is, but he he was he could, he, they wouldn't ever go on a show, no, because you can't they weren't going Robert Downey Jr. wasn't going on a show where the chick was just being banged by a fucking dildo. No, but he was you know doing I mean? that on serious too. He he evolved because he got older, I think. I, I don't I think he could have if he if he wanted to go in that direction, he could have done it anyway. But but the thing is that Howard Stern used to be available to all three hundred million Americans. And some people listen once a month, once a week, once every two months, but but everybody could check in with Howard Stern. Now he's available to a few million or I don't know, five million people who twelve million maybe. Twelve million people who subscribe to yeah. Sirius. Right and now. he's beyond the reach of everybody else. And he could be he could have been Rogan now. He could have had a hundred million listeners, whatever Rogan has. He can't be. He's stuck, he's confined to Sirius now. I I, I I think that's right, because even your podcast when you started it, you were growing at a like like I was looking at your downloads were just growing huge. And then when you went to Sirius, you're only getting those people or where they choose to put you or how they choose to promote you. Yeah. If you had stayed off of Sirius, I think your podcast would have had you know, 100,000 people listening to it. At you're this you're probably right. But And then used to be when Howard Stern said something, that was the zeitgeist. He was the dude. He was the king of all media. He can't be the yeah. king of all media if only subscribers can get you in the car. Right, but don't forget what, what Howard did. He did it at a at a certain time, and and the distribution of 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 his show was different, you know. And what and what Joe is doing, you know, he's able to do it uh, as a podcast versus a radio show. And it's just that it's no different. Like Michael Jordan made X amount of money for a while before that. Magic Johnson made X amount, and then the next guys come along who aren't as even talented, and they're making even more. And the reach is different. Okay. Social media changes. Things. Do you have to pay? Do you have to pay for Spotify? Yeah. No, you can, but it's also you can but get it free. I think to, the, to get to the Rogan stuff, you'll have to pay. So, so oh, well, here's the thing, though, is that it's like all along the advice was give it away for free, give it away for free, give it away for free, and now you're going to have to pay. Well, to I think that that's the thing is it's give it away free until they have to pay. Yes, and then they want it, so they consume it. But Howard didn't get, I mean, he definitely got a ton of millions of, of uh, subscribers and it really put Sirius on the map and, and made th that, uh, that distribution method so appealing to so many other people. But what Howard did also, it's like you say, he did evolve as, as an artist, you know, and he, and he matured as a person and this is the way he wanted to go. So I actually think he might've done the right thing and he was sick of dealing with the FCC. And, you know, and he's, he just, he was the biggest thing of his time. Michael Jordan was the biggest thing of his time. I actually still think he's Jordan's the greatest bas basketball player of all time. That's a side, a, a side note. Oh, that's but, a you stretch. Know, I bet yeah. you Rogan is not going. He'll be available free on Spotify with ads. I can't. I can't believe they would put him behind the paywall. Well, I think he because his announcement today said it was still going to be free, but I don't know if that. Oh, would be I mean, maybe I. I know that with his thing now, it's like free to a certain point because he does what four hours a day. Rogan really. And that's inc that's incredible to do that much a day like him like like Howard. I mean, they're both. I mean, Joe. I Joe's can't think of anything I could do four hours, hours a day. And, and the other yeah. thing is that you got you guys seem to always talk about the money, but I always figure that you know once you have fifty million dollars, like you got to make these decisions for other reasons than money. You, I mean, Howard Stern wants to be the man. You want to be oh. the fucking man in the United States of America. He and was, no. and then maybe he uh, said, "Then you know what? I'm the man now. Fuck it. Let me. I now I want to be a billionaire." Let's just say it's, no Jewish jokes for the next five minutes. Go ahead. It's John. Never enough. It'd be like uh, like somebody from like a third world country going, "Hey, but you have this much Jeff that you make every year. Isn't that enough?" No. It net you get a bunch of properties, you get another business, and you get a million employees. Ask uh, SpaceX, uh, Elon Musk. It's never enough. You always find a reason to spend and that money. And that's and never that's why. And that's why you're alone, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm rich. Say, the house. Not, you give me 50 million, you'll never see me yeah. again. <laughs> and that's why you're alone. You give me 50 million, I'll dump my wife. Listen, yeah. I, you'll save some money. I'll go live with Jeff. <laughs> dump my wife. I'm still swimming in Gnome's pool, though. It says Howard yeah. Stern's worth $650 million on Celebrity God, Network. Yeah. I mean, well, then I guess the question exactly is it your money or is it your legacy? What do you want to be remembered and known as? You know, just like athletes, do you want to win X number of championships or just get paid? But I mean, Howard Stern's got to go to work every morning, right? He's got to go to work every morning. Why would he every have day? Five million people if he could get 100 million people. 
Yeah. Athletes only have to make that decision when they're forced to work with teammates with they have caps. There's no caps with these kind of like businesses where you say, fuck you, I'm the best. I'm Joe Rogan. I'm going to take the most and they give them the most. But the, the most is just unlimited caps. Yeah, but both also, of these. Athletes, you gotta, you gotta, can I say one of thing? Athletes have to make their money in a very short period of time in their life and they never know if they might get injured. Right. So it's 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 a kind of different calculation. Yeah, but but Howard Stern at the time that he left, he was so bombarded and so fucked by the FCC that this was his way out to do the show he wanted to do without dealing with all this fucking horseshit from the higher up. Yeah. He yeah. was they were going to give so that was I guarantee you're probably right more than the money which had something to do with it. Um, being able to do the show he always wanted to do without them fucking with him. Creative then, freedom, yeah. But yeah, also, there was no independent format at that time. Who knows what he would have done if it was... Yeah, like, and by the way, he he renegotiated his contract with Sirius. He could have left and, and gone another route, but he... There's also... Sorry, there's also a lot to be said about, like, be, like if it's only people that are subscribing, like, the, and we're witnessing a lot of podcasts do this, the History Hyenas guys, a lot of podcasts... They'll only do subscribers so that those people come knowing, all right, this is who it is. I don't have to like, I don't have to put up with PETA because I made a joke about a dog. I don't have to yep. put up with, uh, you know, some liberal town or some really Republican town getting annoyed. They can limit the people that are willing to pay well, for it who will agree with that message. Well, I, I actually made fun of the hyenas and I heard it a fucking <laughs> earful from one of their fans that's a fan of my paid thing. So, so that's, that's untrue too. But you can call your wife a Pollock and nobody cares. Hmm. Isn't it? Well, interesting? Well, I mean, I mean, Pollock <laughs> is still on the table. Am I crazy? I mean, <laughs> that you used to hear about Howard Stern in the media all the time from things he did when he was on mainstream radio. You used to hear more from Conan O'Brien when he was on NBC, and then he went to TBS. Yeah. I mean, it, it the platform you're on has a lot but, to do. With but I also, I don't think he wanted to leave NBC. Just to clarify. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. Well, I I also think that Rogan doesn't care. Rogan's Rogan, man. Yeah. Rogan has been Rogan comedy wise, UFC. All he just doesn't care. He yep. does what the fuck he wants to yep. do, and it, that's it. It's a good well, point, though. To Noam's point, if you're um, does does Stern have any new fans now? Once you step out of that picture, and, and does Conan have new fans? Is anyone finding them still, or are they still just maintaining their own thing? That just grows, doesn't it, though? Like, just because everyone's talking, you know what I'm saying? It has as to grow. Much, though, as like it a, might like plateau a little, but... I think Sirius XM is different. I mean, I love all the Sirius XM shows, but you have... I, I think the only people that get serious are people... You're in, in a office. bubble. That's what You're I mean. Anyone could find Rogan still, not until you know, Spotify yeah. maybe not anymore, but no one can just find Stern anymore. Yeah, Mike, you make yeah. a good point because it's like maybe also Stern, maybe his fans, he speaks to a certain age now and he's not going to attract, you know, 25 year old right. fans. You know, he has his core. I bet you Howard Stern, I, I would think he's very happy with that. He made all that, what, 20 million a season doing America's Got Talent? I mean, he's, he's, but he's 60, he is not, isn't he 65 or yeah. 60 something? Yeah, he gave dude. Me a thumbs I mean, up on America's Got Talent. He's, um, he, he's towards the end where he's going to call it a day. Yeah. And go enjoy his fucking life and paint. You know what I mean? So, he, I mean, but Rogan, I think, is... What's that? No, I was going to say, but he's not going to enjoy his life. It's, it's, the day he leaves the radio, he's not going to have as much fun anymore. Like, we're going to sit home. Like, there's nothing There's nothing enjoyable about retiring. Well, yeah. that's why you, for example, you would not want to sell the club. Let's say, hypothetically, you could cash out your club and make just make up a number, 50 million bucks. You would have nothing to do all day, theoretically, and you wouldn't want to leave it. With $50 million? Would you? <laughs> would you bail? What would you do every day? You find a new thing like the comedy seller. I think Ray's no, no, making no. a play for the comedy seller. <laughs> I, I wouldn't. The, the money, the money doesn't. It wouldn't. And this is kind of. It all ties together. Like Rogan, for instance, doesn't sell ads during his show, and we all know he could make a millions just having one ad spot in the middle of that three-hour show, well, right? He sells products, though. He yeah. does sell yeah, but, products. Yeah, but, yeah, he sells products, but he had ads. Yeah. And then he, I, I, I could be wrong, but I believe he was selling supplements and he was like, fuck it. I'm just going to buy a supplement company. Correct. And yeah. He's just but he really does it at smart. the top of the show. He doesn't, he does, he, but he, it's he, his company. Yeah. It's not it's somebody else's stuff. Right. So I, I, I'm not that attracted to the money. I, what, what it would buy me is, um, the security of not having to worry that when I do get to be in my seventies, 
that I, if I go out of business, I won't have fuck you money to, to retire on. You know, the, the comedy seller makes a lot of money, but not the kind of money that I can just be like, you know, if, if it burns down, I'm fine. When so COVID that would be, as I get around. older, $50 million, it's, it's become almost, almost irresponsible to turn it down. I have three kids. I have college. I have all that stuff to worry about. Oh, you could you know, downsize. There's nothing, there's nothing I would do with $50 million that I'm not already doing. Did you just tell Noam to downsize yeah, in a very cunty way? Downsize. <laughs> downsize to what? Me? Like my life? <laughs> no, no, I'm, 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 I'm not living large. What am I living like? You know, yeah, look at your guitars. Room. You live quite nicely. I saw your roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all saw yeah look, at, look at all those guitars. <laughs> I live in the same oh, town as Robert Pink Kelly. Room. No, yeah, let's, Robert let's Kelly's not. Robert Kelly's large. He does not live, live first of all. Robert has a great very, house. No, I'm yours is exponentially larger. Yeah, I, I mean, listen, I have a nice house, but yeah. his house I, is huge. I have I have a huge family here. I got four kids and a wife. You got eight nannies. And an old parent. Kids. About the seven of them. talking about nicer places. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, that's the only reason we, that's the only reason we moved to a bigger house was because we had so many kids. It wasn't. Yeah, and your nannies. You got to have room for your nannies. We should be talking about nicer. I mean, some people, that's all we have to brag about, all right, is our stuff. Yeah, and yeah. you guys have nice pillows. Thank you. Thanks. I got well, them. Uh, we, we don't, the kids don't go to private school. We don't fly right first over. class. I mean, wait, wait a second. there's nothing, we're not living large. They don't go to private schools, but they go to the best schools in the country. It's a 10 out of 10, and the taxes are ridiculous. Well, we yeah, why, don't, why don't you walk around your house, use real backdrops, and let, <laughs> let, let the viewers decide. No. <laughs> Listen, oh, no. Hold on. All right, let's see your real house. Now we're okay. talking. He's in the fucking downstairs room, though. I mean, <laughs> Ray's already <laughs> making excuses of why. It's... It's, it's, <laughs> he's, it's the room he's in in his basement is five times the size of my apartment. Oh, it is a lot of filings. It's a lot oh, of crap. Hey, look, there's <laughs> guitars. Yeah, four of them. Oh. No, I'm taking them up to the top three floors. I don't. I, oh, I do have the wireless computer. Yeah, maybe. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, no, I can't do that. There's nothing. There's nothing fancy in the top three floors. What are you talking about? The top, top two yeah. floors. Robert, Robert already described your pool, which is an accurate description. I mean, it's not even twenty by. Uh, what's the stand? It's not a. Tw not a tw it's eighteen by thirty-six. It's not even twenty by forty, right? But oh, is it in the ground? Um, if it's in the ground, it's a good pool. It's, it's in the ground. I. Let's this. He he has an in-ground pool with a slide, and it's heated. I have a, a pool that you blow up and Max <laughs> pees in it. <laughs> and I have to, I, I have to take it down in September. This is turning into a Bernie Sanders rally. We're rich shaming Noam. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, 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 I got to be honest with you, Noam. I, I, I and this is weird. It's all relative because my bills, I don't have as much as Noam, but his bills and my bills are the same because he has he has more shit he has to pay for. I have less shit, but it's the same thing. It all levels out. It, 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 we're all, he's as struggling as much as I am. He's as, he's as scared as I am about what the fuck's about to happen because he, like he's saying, he doesn't have fuck you money. There's a, look at, you know who has fuck you money because you watch their Instagrams or whatever videos they do and they're, they're fine. They're just like, guys, we're going to get through this together. It's awesome. <laughs> and you're like, we're not. We're not. Yeah. Noam, if you have to sell the building on McDougal Street, I can re recommend some good brokers to you. You, right, you are... have a lot of resentment. Not at all. <laughs> things didn't go well in your own life, but I'm telling well, you. I feel very content. <laughs> I feel very happy these days. I feel good. <laughs> this is this is like well, passive aggressive. I mean, my not God. No, you're not fooling anybody here. But this listen. Is from, from the man who's grilled me about, about the comedian. And I'll fund. contribute to your, to your comedian fund, all right? I feel great right now. I think you're doing just fine, though. I think you have you have some assets. You'll be okay. You'll land on your two feet. My hey, podcast. You those, why are you bodies? lashing out at me? I'm my not lashing out. I'm being very matter of fact. I'm being honest I, here. I just want to I say mean, one thing. Patreon, fucking, these two, these Ray, two people are about to get married. They're sitting on a food Ray, conference. You can't say you don't have resentment when you have graffiti on your wall. You <laughs> I love my graffiti. You're living in my college dorm room right now. I love it. I want to do a wonderful I love uh, Barnard. <laughs> uh, I just want to say that in the fall, patreon.com slash Robert Kelly. We'll be going to Spotify for seventeen hundred dollars. <laughs> All right, listen, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. We're gonna wrap this up. I want to apologize to Ray Allen. 
Why you always apologize and then you you, you wind up? And then he doesn't doing air else. the podcast when no, he he's resentful. So you know, I'm sorry. I'm not resentful. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for myself. I feel fine. Ray, Ray is, yeah. You're not happy for me. All right. You're not fooling anybody. <laughs> I have no, I have no ill will towards you. I think it's great. You're a successful business. I'm going to apologize for calling you resentful. Yeah. You are. I'm not going to apologize for my happiness that you're wealthy. I think it's great. I wasn't judging Noam until I saw that mess behind him. Yeah, man. Hey. <laughs> yeah, you Jeff, might want to get a apologize. new nanny. The current one doesn't <laughs> clean very well. Yeah, get a maid, would you? <laughs> what kind yeah, of rich the, person are you? All the nannies are afraid to leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mike Somerville, I, I goes never, I never walk right by you again. I, I never thought like, I'd be seen as a rich person. Like I, that was never in my. Oh, my... we've been viewing you as a rich person for many years, now Take. A I want to say. Can this I say this? Particular image is really changing. People I went to law school with are rich. All right, they, they, they they're not. I want to say something about Noam. First of all, I've never met a club owner as generous as this guy. And the only thing he truly cares about now, yes, he cares about money. He has a family. He has a business. He has a, he has a, not only that, he has a reputation that he has to uphold that his father put into place. Not only does he have to keep that, he has to make it better, which he did. But I've never met anybody who's more uh, into the creativity of the comedy seller community. One night when he walked up and there was a podcast upstairs and there was a show at the a one man show at the Pussycat and the Village Underground had somebody doing a special event and then they had the band playing and the seller was on. He goes, look at this. Look at all this creativity that's happening on one block under one roof with all of these people. And that made him happy. So. Yes, and, and Ray that, Allen was hosting the group McDougal Comedy Club, whatever it was down the block. That's what that was the icing on the cake. <laughs> now, see, well, no, you're, the, you're the Quincy Jones of comedy. No, good for you. I, I fucking had it wrapped up, Gnome, and you I'm couldn't sorry. let me wrap you know, it up. You know what? You're absolutely right, first of all. That was very sweet of you. Thank you, Robert. And it is true. I, I remember that true. night, and it does make me happy. And I don't know yes. why Ray turned it in this way, but I don't think I don't think I started it. But if I did start, I'm sorry. It's and any just, other club just, owner, Ray, Ray, it's just any every other, other show. It's Ray, just every other podcast. And by Ray, the way, you're very lucky that I do host your shows. Ray, any other any other club owner would fight like this with comics and not just you, but we he's fought with me, he fought with everybody. We've yeah. all had arguments. Would would put that against you and not let you work the club. Well, that's does, why I can't that's never why does I'm on that. the show. Otherwise, he I never would never that. be on a program like that. Yeah, that's why but I would he, never do that. Al that Martin is, but, but that is a that is a rare thing to find in club owners. Yeah. Try that with the manager of Motel Sixty Six in Aruba. See if they keep your show there. Oh, <laughs> that is just. What would you say, motels? It's not the motel. It's the Holiday Inn. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hey, very nice place. <laughs> It's three times the size of the uh, underground. So, all right. Uh, will you guys stop? with you have, you guys are both Jewish. You got little tiny. But peckers. I'm tongue and cheek, and he's serious. <laughs> I'm right. not serious. I'm fine. I feel very. This is the best best uh, podcast I've been on related to the cellar. This is we, Andy. Uh, all right, let's the go. The third let's go. night we were back, we went and walked to the cellar and just sat on the steps. Oh, that's nice. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we miss it. <laughs> Watch oh, the homeless man so defecate in this stairwell. Oh, Ray, stop it. It's, 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 it means something hey. to some people, all right? Hey, uh, Andy. I appreciate sissy. that, Andy. <laughs> no, but I masturbate. I'm I'm not, uh, oh, you're mad? Good. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I have I a listen. picture of Andy standing outside the cellar like this. Masturbating. <laughs> masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, listen, uh, Ray Allen, please tell us your uh, your comic. Uh, uh, supportcomedians.org and uh, Instagram is Ray Comedy. There you go. And and, and uh, you also have something this Friday night, I believe. Oh, yeah. Fr please go to arubacomedy.com. You can get tickets there. Arubacomedy.com. You need the green screen to make that happen. Oh, yeah, I started, doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, you look like an idiot now. So you just take it off. Uh, <laughs> uh, Michael, what do you have besides beautiful little Irish cheeks? My, <laughs> my rosy cheeks. My brand new album just came out. Best of Michael Somerville. 20 years in comedy. It's on uh, everything. Uh, Apple Music and Spotify. Check it out, please. Awesome. And uh, Jeff, what do you have besides uh, just a gorgeous cheekbone? Oh, thank you. Uh, you can find me on just all things at Jeff Dye. Um, June 4th through 7th, I'm going to be in San Antonio live, doing live shows oh. at the LOL Comedy Club, more live dates. And then also I'm doing a virtual show um, the 29th. 
Is is Mushy Mike, the producer of this show, is in San Antonio? He's a comedian. Is he working with you? Uh, I'm hoping he is. Yeah, him and James Bosquez and all those guys. That's actually where I met him. I love those guys. Good, man. Yeah, Mike I'm, is... Uh, are you in San Antonio? Right right now I am, yeah. Cool. If you'll be there, let's... let's. We, we always do. We always drink when I'm there. So. Oh, good. He's he's great. He's a great the comic. Uh, and the married couple, what do you have? We have our podcast, Find Your Beach. There's a Patreon. We were uh, featured in uh, the Washington Post magazine this week. All oh, that great photos. Looks like someone went in your house. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, someone did. It looks good, though. It was really good. Yeah. That's yeah. good exposure, Washington Post. Yeah. Yeah, it was nice. It was a good article. Got a nice little two page spread. We're in the magazine. It's all it's online fun. as well, right? I'm going to show us. I can read online. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Congratulations. I, I Well, listen, this has been a fun one. Uh, my name's Robert Kelly. I host here sometimes. Uh, Patreon.com slash Robert Kelly is where all my stuff is. That's how I make my living. And uh, we will see you tomorrow night. Same place, 830 uh, Comedy Selling Nightly. We'll see you later. Take care.